uh, we are uh, because of this. I have to close this. Yeah. I, uh, uh, we will be starting shortly, inshallah. Uh, we welcome our uh, brothers and sisters, our scholars in the Zoom, and our people who are here. And uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, Prophet he is with us now. And I think another two minutes we will uh, start, inshallah, this professorial lecture. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان and also in this room, all the participants welcome to our World Professorial Lecture number 18. Professor Dr. Fathi al Malkawi, Professor Dr. Fauzan, Dr. Ahmad Rafi, Deputy Director General, Ministry of Education, Dr. Amin Sini, former Director General, Ministry of Education who is forming us in the Zoom, all our professors and doctors, postgraduate students, lecturers and participants from all parts of the world who are following us in the Zoom and those who are with us here uh, can be studied. Welcome to the 18th Stack World Professorial Lecture inviting Professor Nekhi al Merkawi to deliver a lecture on epistemological integration, handling the obstacles. Brothers and sisters, we have started this series of professorial lectures around one and five, one year and five months ago. During this period, 17 world professorial lectures were delivered by scholars, intellectuals, experts, even one prime minister, the former prime minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe, has uh, delivered one lecture under this platform of Islam. Brothers and sisters, this platform is meant to enrich the intellectual discourse and to bring scholars, ulama, intellectuals, students, researchers together to think 
about very, very serious issues facing not only the woman today, but the world at large, brothers and sisters. Today, we invited Professor Fadil Malkawi to deliver a lecture in one of the most pressing issues and topics of interest and merit to the Muslim woman, which is the topic of integration of knowledge, which, is, which comes within the framework of the bigger framework of the project of Islamization of knowledge, and then comes integration of knowledge in order to move the Islamic worldview from theory into uh, a social context. So brothers and sisters, in this context, this lecture of Prof. Fatih uh, Bakawi, inshallah, will address issues and topics in this, uh, in this area of epistemology and integration. And I think it's a very great opportunity for us here to uh, go into an intellectual uh, discussion, debate with Prof. Bakawi. Uh, I think, if I may say, uh, that he is currently, or let's say, uh, uh, maybe the uh, one of the uh, the great scholars specializing in integration of knowledge in the Islamic world today, brothers and sisters. Now, before I uh, give the uh, mic to Professor Fatih, I would like just to give you a brief account of the uh, background of Professor uh, Fatih. Uh, brothers and sisters, Fatih, uh, Professor Fatih is a Jordanian educator and university professor born in 1943. He obtained PhD in science, education and philosophy of science, Michigan State University, USA, 1984. MA in education psychology, the University of Jordan, 1978. Advanced Diploma in Science, University of Reading, UK, 1972. BE in Chemistry and Geology, Damascus University, 1966. Worked in the, in the Ministry of Education and at the, and at the University in Jordan for about 30 years. He joined the International Institute of Islamic Thought in 1987 as part-time academic advisor, then as full-time in its headquarters in Washington. Uh, since 1969, held positions of executive director, director of research, regional director, editor of the American Journal of Islamic Social Science in English, and editor in chief the Islamic Journal of Knowledge in Arabic. He is now a senior researcher at MIT, a member of the Jordan Academy of Arabic Language since 2006, lectured widely on various topics of Islamic education and thought in about 35 countries in the Asia, Africa, Europe, and the United States regions. Among his latest published books, Classical Foundations of the Islamic Education of Thought, co-authored with Dr. Bradley Cook, published by Bingham Young University, USA 2010 in English, Epistemological Integration, Essentials of Islamic Methodology, ID 2012 in Arabic and in English 2014, and it's coming soon in Turkish language. Intellectual building, concept, importance, and intellectual maps, January 2015. Mapping intellectual building and the construction of thought and reason, 2020 in English. The Islamic educational heritage, the state of its research, glimpses of its development, and extracts from its texts, and schools 2017, contemporary Islamic educational thought 2020, intellectual. If I continue like this, and by Maghrib, I call upon Professor 
I'm so happy to be here again after a few years of uh, absence from this place. Uh, I have been here for several times before. Uh, of course, every time I meet a new generation, uh, because uh, uh, I was born in the uh, 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 first part of the <laughs> century. <laughs> so a little bit, I mean, I, I'm seeing the new youth in this place, including this uh, young person. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, this young uh, Professor Walid, I'm happy to be here. Uh, I see you here again. Kazan and the governor was a guest here. Uh, so thank you very much for attending and for your concern of uh, uh, being here to uh, attend this. Allahum alimna ma yafa'una wa anfa'na bima alatana wa wazidna ilma. What did you see here? Of course, if you remember the title of the uh, of this lecture, epistemological integration, overcoming obstacles. So as if we see here, a stream of water, a creek, and uh, a rock, right? And water moving forward. When a stream of water encounters a rock in its way, in its way, the water does not stop moving. It continues its running. Right? Now, at least the water runs along the sides of the rock, causing some oil erosion for its both sides. But sometimes some water penetrates the soil under the rock. The rock begins to descend little by little. But some more time, the water runs and submerge the rock and pass over it, right? Yes. I think we see this all the time in our life. So this is one way to uh, have some lesson of the physical uh, ayat of this world. This is what we see, but what we see uh, are always uh, lessons for us to learn from. So whenever we encounter a, an obstacle, there should be a way. <laughs> okay. Epistemological integration, integration of knowledge. Are you okay? Integration of knowledge. We used to say I okay Islamization of knowledge. But uh, some friends here would use I OK capital letters as customization of knowledge and I small O K like uh, for uh, integration of knowledge. Uh, now I stick with I OK customization of knowledge. Why uh, this kind of uh, project was developed? Uh, within the uh, uh, civilizational aspiration of the Muslim woman. 
Islamization or uh, Islamic uh, civilization uh, has flourished for such as uh, everyone knows that. But uh, this kind of flourishment, followed by centuries of decline, caused by blind faith, literalism, and dogmatism. And the result was illiteracy, ignorance, and superstitions. At the same time, Europe was advancing. Based on critical mindedness, liberalism, and rationalism. And the result was knowledge, science, and industry. So we see now again knowledge deficit. I okay. The modernization of knowledge was a reform and renewal intellectual project to bridge the gap and care for this knowledge deficit. Where are we in our civilization building? We are here. This is the present time. Any present time, any time, there will be actual needs, influences, and opportunities, challenges. But all these aspects of the present contemporary things are product of history. So we should look at this. Because the history is where where we what is history? History is the formation of experience. Some good forgotten things, the mistakes to avoid, some positions overlooked to make up for. And all these aspects are the causes of the present. Uh, uh, place in which we are. So yes, we are here in the present, but we have to look at the history to see why we are here as a product of that history. But we are here not to look back, but to look forward. It is right that we are the product of history, but we are here to move forward to the future. What is left in our civilization and journey? Of course, we have to build on available experiences, but we have to create a new opportunity also in order, in order to advance into new frontiers. If you see the level of concerns of these three periods of history, uh, yeah. uh, the span of interest You see the difference. In the past, we have a little concern. At the present, we have to think uh, greatly and long time about it, but not for, to stay in, in the present, but to move. So the concerns of the future is our concern, not the history, not even the present situation. I can't care something does not go in. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is the way in which civilization continues to be built. It's a, a process of building. It's 
uh, building process, continuous building process. But for that time, this is uh, one way to present the recent past and the near future, which we should look carefully and also take into consideration the distant past and the far uh, uh, future. In the middle, we have uh, one uh, moment, let us say one minute, one uh, day, one uh, year. This is the present. It's very short time. We start 10, 10 minutes ago. The time when we start has become in the past. So uh, the present is always just one moment, very short time. But as we uh, uh, mentioned, the present is the is the project of the of the past, especially the recent past. So we have to think, and we have these units of time to think about the recent past. But also, we have to move forward to think about the near future. And as you know, we have uh, short time, uh, middle time, and long time. Uh, planning. Uh, so uh, the near future is the most concerns of us, but as part of the far future. Uh, and a Muslim uh, looks at the timeline of mankind in its entirety. The present, the past, and the future. The present in the timeline is just a moment. The recent past is what brought us to the present. The near future is what we strive for. Distant past and far future are present in our consciousness. We don't forget it. We have some educational experiences uh, on integration of knowledge in various places of the world at the present. Of course, we are here at the International Islamic University in Malaysia, IIUM. It used to be um, a laboratory for Islamization of knowledge and integration of knowledge. And hopefully it will continue this mission in order to be a symbol and example for the Muslim Ummah. So many colleges, institutes, and research centers have been built during the last 10 years with the name of integration of, of knowledge in various places of the world. There are programs, courses, textbooks, and uh, um, research papers also published with the name and uh, slogan and motto of integration of knowledge. Hundreds of religious universities in the United States and Europe, they have programs of integration of knowledge. If you Google this uh, integration of knowledge, you will see, for example, Catholic University in the USA to find a list of 253 universities where they have programs of integration of knowledge. 253 universities in the United States and Canada that have programs of integration of knowledge. Basically, religious aspects of integration of knowledge. Uh, at least in the triple IT, we have published books with, the, with this name, this epistemological of uh, integration. Uh, we have uh, conducted conferences on epistemological integration. We have uh, published uh, uh, research, uh, doctoral research, and uh, um, <clears throat> thesis uh, also in uh, uh, Takamul al-Ma'rifi. 
epistemological integration. We have textbooks now, we have conferences, we have dissertations, training courses, lectures, university courses, university program, and institution. The latest institution, I think a few months ago, was in, uh, in Georgia, uh, Islamization of uh, Integration of Knowledge Institute, IKI. But uh, the term integration of knowledge has so many uh, connotations. Uh, most of the meanings related to integration of knowledge is about epistemological knowledge. Uh, and we can cite Ibn Khaldun, for example, Ibn Rushd. Ibn Rushd, for example, he was uh, uh, known by fiqh, by usul al-fiqh, by medicine, by philosophy. Uh, Al-Kindi is another name, and you can cite so many names who have been known as with encyclopedic knowledge that we can uh, at least uh, in a certain level of understanding, find the idea of integration among these different uh, aspects of, of knowledge. Sciences need, need each other. Uh, medicine needs biology, uh, for example. Education needs psychology, and so on. You can uh, mention so many uh, disciplines of knowledge, which needs really other disciplines of knowledge uh, 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 to help each other in order to find uh, practical uh, solutions for real problems of life. Uh, we have so many uh, dualities which needs to be integrated. The seen and the unseen, al dunya and al-akhira. And you can name so many uh, uh, duels and so many uh, uh, of this uh, terms in modern sciences. In engineering, you find integration systems, right? In calculus, interdisciplinarity is uh, one of the main themes in most uh, university courses now. There are so many courses uh, with this kind of interdisciplinarity. Uh, like a topic of uh, research should be studied uh, not under one discipline, but uh, with the, the um, uh, structure of knowledge from uh, different uh, disciplines. Uh, in education, curriculum education, or integrated curriculum education, cu curriculum, um, even in Adab al Arabi or Adab woman, criticism in supplication and uh, complementation. Okay. Integration among nations, integration among generation in each nation, right? Now, these are different meanings of integration. But what is the meaning of integration that we are interested in now, in this lecture or in this university? Islamization of knowledge, integration of knowledge, IOK. Each has its own focus and relevance. Both are related to each other. Both became mottos in, uh, for triple IT and IIOM. Islamization of knowledge, the terminology has been a watchword with a lot of criticism from within and from without. Islamization of knowledge has been a term phrase to entice and stimulate the Muslim mind to entice and stimulate the Muslim mind. It became motto of cultural and intellectual reforms to lead other reforms. Muslim Ummah has so many problems, political, economic, and so on and so forth. But the intellectual problem might be a way 
to 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 deal with other problems because uh, with politics you need political thought with economics you need political uh, uh, you know uh, thought etc the concept faced criticism from within islamic circles and from outside islamization knowledge became a little uh, a title on the contemporary islamic intellectual reform project some institutions have used other titles and mottos to denote the same concepts. And sometimes it is the idea of using or not using the word Islamization. Uh, for example, uh, we don't need to say Islamization, let us say harmonization. Okay, I think Kamal Kamali, Dr. Hashim Professor Hashim Kamali, Hashim, Hashim, Hashim Kamali, uh, let's say, uh, in Arabic, تطبيع المعرفة يعني normalization, adoption, adaptation, uh, many names, but the idea of these alternatives is not to use Islamization because it has some kind of sensitivity, at least after 9-11. To me, at least, Islamization did not, uh, integration did not come to substitute Islamization as a reaction to criticism. Integration is a description of the modus operandi of the Muslim mind as it should be. The way in which the Muslim mind works as it should be. That's integration. It's a methodology. And you see, whatever you, were, you read, methodology, ology, at the end, it's a science of something. So methodology is the science of methods by which to acquire knowledge from sources by means for purposes. So it's a process, methodology, it's a process of acquiring knowledge from sources by means for purposes. Interdisciplinarity has been uh, uh, broken down into various uh, um, categories and various uh, levels of, of, uh, of interaction and integration between different uh, disciplines. Uh, Predisciplinary, intradisciplinary, multidisciplinary, cross-disciplinary, interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary. Where is I okay in this? This is something that should be taken into consideration that when someone said, okay, this, this is, we, we call it interdisciplinary. That's okay, but disciplinary is not one level. Sometimes, as you see, it's various levels. Uh, when you combine two disciplines together, uh, the, the, the idea of intersection between them sometimes uh, has various uh, 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 ways in which they interact and uh, uh, intersect. Uh, there are you know, the literature about disciplinarity is uh, you know, so much you can find it in uh, uh, various places. Uh, there is a, an encyclopedia, interdisciplinary encyclopedia of religion and science. This might be uh, uh, some of our concerns. There is an Oxford handbook of interdisciplinarity. Okay, so integration of knowledge is a methodology of using certain sources and means of knowledge. It's a process to combine ideas, build connections, and develop cohesive, meaningful structure of knowledge about an issue, a problem, a question, or a phenomenon. Okay, integration of knowledge also comes sometimes with unity of knowledge. Are they the same? Are they different? 
my understanding is that the two terms belong to each other, belong to the same semantic field. Affirming, but affirming one does not deny the other. Both are important, each in its relevant context. Using one or the other is a matter of the context in which we use it. Unity is about relationship at the ontological level. So it's a more theoretical concept. Integration is about relationship at the epistemological level. It's more in the practical and educational. Unity of knowledge is the foundation for its integration. Uh, okay, so uh, methodology integration of knowledge is and is a methodology of acquiring knowledge from sources by means. What are the sources? For us, integration of knowledge in the Islamic perspective, we have only two sources. It's revelation and creation. Uh, in Quran, Al-Wahi is well known in the Sunnah, the Sunnah, part of the Sunnah is Wahi, as you know. Uh, the word of Al-Alameen in the Quran is mentioned so many times. And the understanding of Al-Alameen, Al-Alameen is the plural of Alam. Alam is a plural without a singular. You know, this is a, an Arabic uh, terminology about the meaning of alam and alamin. Alamin is plural of alam, and alam is a plural, but it does not have a singular of it. Okay. And uh, when, uh, whenever Musa alayhi salam was mentioned in the Quran, the word Rabbil Alamin would be mentioned uh, with him also, so many times with all the prophets, but especially with Musa, with his argument with Pharaoh. When sometimes, when at, at one time, Pharaoh asked uh, Musa, who is Rabbil Alameen? Yani, you are talking so much about Rabbil Alameen. Who is Rabbil Alameen? The answers, he answered three questions. I answered three answers. Rabbu samawati wal ardi wa ma baynahuma. So al alamun al alamin those universal or uh, physical universe, okay? is part of Alameen. Then uh, he did not uh, like this kind of answer. He answered another, Rabbukum wa Rabbu Abaikum al Alameen. So it's the physical world and it's the societal world, the social world, civilizations, nations, languages, uh, etc., and psychological world. So these are three different words. And Al Alamun or Al Alameen fil Quran. Uh, has all these different aspects of al alamin That's why I, I prefer al alamin wa-ru'yat al-alam, instead of al-ru'ya al-kulliya or ru'ya al-universe, for example, etc. And uh, this is the creation. All uh, this is the creation. Uh, okay, that's the sources. What about the means? We have only two means also. We have our reason and we have our senses. I challenged many in many instances, uh, professors like you to come out with a third mean. Uh, whenever you come any, any uh, another uh, or, or any other means will be part of senses or part of reason. It will not be separate of one of, of them, of any one of them. But as you see in the sources, you have uh, 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 interrelationship with this uh, uh, between them. And the same thing with the means also. But how to acquire knowledge by these means? You see, that you have to apply your senses with revelation. And you have to apply your reasons 
with the words. And you see, you have uh, senses and words related, related to, the, to the revelation and the words at the same time. So this kind, uh, this is what I call uh, epistemological integration model. Uh, this is the uh, cover of my book, Epistemological Integration. I think you have copies like over this uh, here. And this is the uh, brief of the book also. Okay, now acquiring knowledge, human acquired knowledge. And at the end, we are dealing with human knowledge, not with any other knowledge. Why humans acquire knowledge? Humans acquire knowledge from sources by means for purposes. What are these purposes? These purposes are the higher maqasid and value. What are they? At tawheed wa tazkiyah al umran. So integration is a process to deal with the sources and means in order to achieve purposes. If this is the integration process, and these are the purposes. And the purposes here are the heart of the integration methodology. This is one way to show it. Tawheed, Tazkiyah, and Umran. So integration of knowledge is the heart of Maqasid. The need for integration of knowledge is inherent in its meaning. It's not intrusion on human understanding about the truth. Rather, it is the result of contemplation on nature and facts about things, whether these things in the physical and social entities and psyches of mankind. The Quranic text help us in a clear and decisive way in explaining the necessity of integration of sources and means whether by induction, when you make induction about the various ayahs in the Quran and the terms used in the Quran as a sunan al kawniya wa sunan al ijtima'iyya and a sunan al nafsiyya. This is for the text, but for the Islamic heritage, the Islamic heritage is full of references of integration. For example, you see Kalimatullah, uh, uh, words of Allah, which is revelation, and the works of Allah, Allah's works, which is the creation. And we see also in the literature and the Islamic heritage, Al Ayat Al Mandura, Wal Ayat Al Mastura, the written book and the visible, visible book. Uh, of course, the, uh, many uh, of the uh, heritage uh, textbook written by uh, famous uh, Muslims, uh, Ibn Rushd, for example, Fasl al-Maqal, Bain al-Shari'ati wal-Hikmati min al-Tisal or Fisal. Okay. Uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, Dar al-Maqasid, Dar al Dar al-Ta'arud, Bain al-Aqli wa al-Naql. Wording of contradictions. Ibn al Qayyim mentioned this Al Jam'u Bain al Qira'atayn, Qira'at al Ayat al Mastura wal Ayat al Mandura. 
This is various types of uh, understanding of integration. So it is not something new. It's not a product of uh, new civilization. It's not an addition to uh, our uh, Islamic heritage or addition. It is there in the text, it's there in heritage, and it is actual uh, pressing, pressing issues of the time. Um, of course, this kind of understanding of integration is influenced directly by our worldview. So how our worldview has influenced what we did or what we did not do. This means that we take into consideration the three embraces circles, the world view might be the larger circle. Inside it, it's the ontology. In ontology, you had the epistemology, and in epistemology, it's methodology. So methodology is part of epistemology. Epistemology is part of ontology. And all of them are uh, uh, embraced circles within the Islamic worldview. Uh, worldview is a term which used to be uh, composing the answers of certain questions. Even with the uh, Christian uh, literature, you, you find uh, the word view uh, uh, citing these questions also, the seven questions. What are the seven questions? The first question is about the creator. Is there a creator or not? That's a question about word view. If you, if you believe in a creator, that's one word view. If you don't, that's another word view. Okay, there's a question about the creation. And there is a question about a human being. What is the purpose of uh, the presence of a human being in this world? And the most important thing about the human being is his ability to acquire knowledge. So these are the answers of four questions related to the world view. There are other questions also, but we don't, we don't want to deal with them now. Uh, some of them related to uh, dunya and akhirah, whether there is another uh, life. Some of them will, will, uh, will be about al-khayr and the sharr, uh, uh, and the, the death also. All these uh, things are, okay. Now, epistemological integration is something related to epistemology. Well, that, uh, epistemology is uh, uh, how a human being has acquired knowledge, or how a human being integrate this knowledge. So integration of knowledge is a frame of reference to Islamic methodology. Integration of knowledge is a frame of reference for Islamic methodology. What is Islamic knowledge? Why is Islamic knowledge? Islamic knowledge is the way in which the Muslim mind deal or deals with these four aspects. How does Islam, the, the Muslim mind uh, deal with text, the Quran and the Sunnah? A certain methodology. With Islamic heritage, a certain methodology. With present contemporary human experiences, there's also an Islamic way to deal with uh, the acquired, the, the contemporary knowledge of, of our time in various uh, disciplines, uh, in science, in technology, in history, in philosophy, etc. But also the Muslim mind deals with the realities of the world as they are and as they should be. So this is the domains, various domains in which the Muslim mind has to practice uh, acquiring knowledge, testing knowledge, and applying knowledge. So integration 
between their two readings, the creation and revelation, Al-Kitab al-Mandur, Al-Kitab al-Mastur, reading the word with L or reading the word without L, the work. And it's a combined reading. You read both of them. Borders of human knowledge. Uh, there's a problem uh, of uh, translation between Arabic and English of some certain uh, terms. For example, uh, in Islam, al-ilm, al-ma'rifa, al-irfan. In English, we have knowledge. So where is knowledge between ilm, ma'rifa, and arfan? In Quran, ilm is, uh, uh, is the world view of all other types of ilm. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ilm, and he is alim, alim, uh, alim al-ghayb, etc. Al-malaika has ilm, al-anbiya has ilm, al-insan has ilm. Even different creatures have ilm. Like when you teach dogs or uh, uh, birds for hunting, for example. تُعَلِّمُونَهُنَّ مِمَّا عَلَّمَكُمُ اللَّهِ So, ilm, irfan is part, uh, ma'rifah is part of ilm. Ma'rifah is something related to human being. But ilm is something more than human being. It's something related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is not arif. We cannot call Allah arif. We call Allah alim. But al-insan alim wa arif at the same time. Because he can acquire part of ilm Allah and ilm the creation of Allah. Ilm Allah al-wahi wa ilm Allah al-makhluq. So ilm of the divine, of English, of prophets, of humans, etc. Uh, Al-Irfan is something, uh, a small domain of knowledge, which is uh, given ilm, wahb, uh, kashf, uh, mujahada. It's part of uh, the Sufi aspect of uh, uh, related to, to, to human knowledge. It's part of human knowledge, but it's a, uh, what they call subject, subjective knowledge. But we are concerned about knowledge, not about ilm, not about uh, uh, irfan. Uh, knowledge in this English word is part of ilm. And this is what we uh, uh, have the concern of its integration, integration in human knowledge. Of course, you see the relationship between uh, uh, the knowledge of humans and its sources of the divine, and also it has little uh, concerns with the other irfan. But the human knowledge is what we deal with in its integration in very in one discipline, any discipline. You remember the pyramid of knowledge? I think most of you should know. Uh, what is meant by the pyramid of knowledge. The base of the pyramid is uh, the facts. Then the second uh, part of it is uh, concepts. Then uh, the interactions, laws. At the end, uh, uh, theory, right? So this is a, uh, uh, this, a, a certain discipline that has these different level, but there is an integration between these different levels. So this are integration in, in a one in, in, in one discipline, and there are integration in one category of disciplines, and there is, is integration between several categories, and also we have uh, to uh, uh, at least have some kind of awareness about the nature of human perception. This is the type of human perception. Yani we are in this kind of uh, this differentiation between different levels of integration. We are describing the nature of human uh, perception. 
okay this is we uh, uh, يعني talked a little bit about history we talked about uh, a little bit about uh, the present case of integration but we have to move ahead toward the near future what does it mean to use uh, integration of knowledge methodology at higher education level in teaching and research how do we describe the degree of maturity in the experiences of integration of knowledge in higher education these are legitimate questions we have to answer them and we don't have full answers yet that's why i'm saying that we have to move ahead in our experiences in higher education what kind of qualification or training needed for university professors to use integration of knowledge methodology what impacts of teaching islamic sharia and social sciences at the same college by different professors what is the relationship of the state of integration of knowledge and then uh, of a university professor and the university student if we need to teach students to integrate knowledge how about university uh, university professor himself or herself is it fair that we uh, the professor would ask the student to do this integration while the professor will not be able to do it this is what i say legitimate questions about uh, uh, integration of knowledge at higher education institutions but as we mentioned uh, at the beginning that there are uh, obstacles problems that we face uh, to achieve integration of knowledge what are some of these obstacles contemporary education systems do not provide programs to gain experiences and training integration of knowledge because uh, contemporary education experiences teach in a certain discipline now there are interdisciplinary issues sometimes issues not courses uh, not uh, uh, يعني, uh, various the types of knowledge but pieces of knowledge from various aspects to deal with a certain issue in an interdisciplinary way uh, there is a lack of appropriate practical experience and training in doing integration of knowledge a scarcity of appropriate examples of integration of knowledge work in teaching and research and there is a difficulty of the analysis of these examples if they are available i think yesterday we uh, some of the professors have mentioned that professors are under so much pressure that they cannot do something added to their load they are already overloaded so if you add on them that they have to do this and that uh, it's uh, so there there is a need uh, to to add efforts uh, in order uh, uh, يعني, to do some the required integration knowledge added effort uh, required for integration like and this will leads professor to focus on research and teaching needed for uh, for promotion Of course, there is always false assumptions, misuse, and misrepresentation of the structure of Islamization of knowledge and integration of knowledge. These are five obstacles of achieving integration of knowledge that we have to overcome. But there are also third type of questions. I call them strategic questions. 
what are the strategies and incentives necessary to teach using integration of knowledge experiences in university education? Who are qualified to use integration of knowledge methodology in teaching their own specialization? When will the necessary amount of integration of knowledge experiences be gained and become mainstream? One generation, two generations, three generations? Where? You see the first questions. What, who, when, where? Where does individual creativity, teaching teams, and institutional culture fall in gaining integration of knowledge experiences? How did we evaluate what has been achieved of integration of knowledge experiences? How to construct appropriate tests to evaluate such experiences? Moving ahead from much talking about integration of knowledge to more doing integration of knowledge in higher education. That's what we need now. Most needed and urgent. A manual of integration of knowledge for teaching and for research. The purpose, the main purpose is to move from talking about IOK to doing IOK. I think I will move now to the end. This will take time if I need to explain. Okay. So we are dealing at the present uh, of trying to develop a manual for epistemological integration methodology. There is available now a plethora of writing about integration, its importance, presence in Quran and Sunnah, presence in its heritage, present even in uh, different cultures. This is available. But what is the required examples of research where methodology of integration is being practiced not mere talking about it. That's the priority then. Priority one, finding such in, uh, 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 required examples and doing the uh, following analysis. What are the two elements in the example to be integrated? How are they independent of each other? Why these two elements need to be integrated? How each element illuminate the other? and what is the result of this integration. If we find good examples, we need to uh, analyze each example to show these elements of integration. Priority two, proposed research with the purpose of applying, applying the methodology of integration of knowledge uh, in which to storming the aqaba, اقتحام العقبة. فلاقتحام العقبة. Overcoming the obstacle. These are the, the five uh, elements of analysis. These are the five chapters of the manual which is proposed to be developed. And Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Uh, thank, you, thank you very much, Prof. Fakhi, uh, for this very uh, informative, and I think it's uh, really a deep integrated lecture. You need long time to digest. And I think he has, uh, he has put us in a, a kind of a paradigm shift and paradigm thinking so that we can integrate and put things together. And this is actually 
what we need to do in this institute in particular, and then our university in general, and in the Ummah, in the bigger picture. Thank you, Prof. Fathi, uh, for this very enlightening and informative, and I think it raises a lot of questions, a lot of information, a lot of things to be done, inshallah. Now, let's start with uh, uh, some of our questions. Uh, those who are in uh, Zoom and would like to uh, 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 ask questions, whether directly or uh, written question, I have some written questions here. And our professors here, our doctors, our postgraduate students also, you can uh, give your uh, inputs and ideas. Uh, Prof. Uh, Prof. Hey, if we start, there is one uh, question uh, from Brother Muhammad Asri. Dr. Muhammad Asri, uh, he says, "Does Triple uh, IT still using the world, the work plan of Professor Al Faruqi and Islamization before?" Uh, uh, attached to this question, uh, Sister Brother Khalid saying, uh, you mentioned integration of knowledge is the heart of Maqasid. Could you please elaborate on this point? So these are the first two uh, questions. Maybe you can uh, address them. Now? Yeah. OK. You remember uh, the first uh, work uh, published under Islamization knowledge was the work of uh, uh, Al Faruqi when he mentioned at least the experience of what was going on into the 60s and the 70s. There were a lot of work in the United States speci specifically uh, concerns about the Islamic presence in the in the West, and those young students at that time who uh, decided to stay there and to think about their Muslim Ummah in their countries, because they are they were free to think, while in their countries they might not be even to uh, have any incentive to think or ability to think or freedom to think. But they were thinking there. So they established institutions. And at the end, they decided to uh, establish this institution, International Islamic, uh, uh, International uh, uh, Institute of Islamic Thought, for those people in order to live in that institute and work free of charge in that institute for the rest of their life. So this, that was their vision and mission. At that time, the, the knowledge that they have in their experiences, mostly they were medical doctors, engineers, okay, and uh, uh, scientists. Most of them were like this, but they uh, realized the need for social studies and the humanities. Okay, so that's why they established, for example, in 1968, uh, the Islamic Medical Association. In 1969, uh, Association of Muslim Scientists and Engineers. In 1972, Association of Muslim Social Scientists. That was the lat latest one. They realized the need that this is our need. So they started from that, in fact, in 1972, to think about this integration of human uh, sciences, basically with the Islamic sciences. Uh, of course, the experience of uh, Al Faruqi himself was something ref reflect reflected in the uh, uh, in his ideas. He was uh, trained in philosophy uh, in American University of Beirut. Then he went to America, also continued his studies in philosophy, in Western philosophy, okay? And he was a, a professor at universities, and he realized that he is, yes, he is Palestinian. Yes, he is an Arab. Yes, he is a Muslim, but he is American now. But as a professor, he is not qualified to have these 
Palestinian Arabic Islamic identity. So he went back to Cairo and spent four years learning Islamic things, Islamic fiqh, Islamic hadith, Islamic aqidah, went back to America, more qualified, and he proved that he was one of the best qualified uh, professors at the American Academia. So he forced himself, in fact, and everything accepted him as uh, an authority in Islam and social sciences. Uh, that's why many uh, Orientalists would uh, deal with him and ask him to write certain pieces of work from his own world view to explain how he, Al Faruqi, would uh, understand others. So at that time, the things that the, the 12 uh, uh, procedures of integration was something is not something that you have to this, then this, and you have all this to, to, uh, together at the same time. It's not a uh, a process which you start with something to go to the other. If if you do that, you will not you will finish your life without doing anything. That's what of the uh, misunderstanding of what Al Faruqi has mentioned. So, but in order to be qualified to do that, you have to your, uh, uh, have your Islamic background, and you have to master your specialization at the same time. Okay, so what is uh, what you need of your Islamic ba background? You have to continue. You have to complete it. What you uh, have in need in your specialization, you have to be uh, uh, to complete it to be at the best level of. Uh, uh, knowledge uh, like others or uh, best than others or better than others. That's the idea that those who are going to do the, uh, uh, the integration and the Islamization should be well qualified in Islamic side and in the contemporary knowledge. That's the whole idea. So it's not something that procedures which you will not uh, move from one another to, uh, to from one one uh, level to another at the end of your life. That's uh, some of the uh, misunderstanding. What, that's why later read uh, writings about Islamization knowledge was more simple, uh, just to uh, to make sure that everyone who is trying to do Islamization should have at least these two legs. Okay, contemporary knowledge and Islamic knowledge. And contemporary uh, Islamic knowledge does not mean that you have PhD in Islamic uh, aqidah and fiqh and hadith and Quran and everything. But what is needed from Quran, what is needed from hadith, what is needed of aqidah for that specific specialization of yours. And that's easier than thinking about uh, acquiring everything about Islam. Uh, for example, if you ask a certain very well-versed professor now about uh, distributing uh, uh, earth, uh, inheritance. okay, inheritance, he will not do it. He will go, okay, go to Raid because he's specialized in this. He will make the calculation in two minutes. A kind of special specialization, like medical, uh, uh, medicine uh, in the medical profession. Uh, there are specialization, etc. So that's uh, with, but you are qualified in your uh, sociology, psychology, you have to be at the level of any other professor at the university. So this is kind of, you acquire the knowledge needed for you and you acquire the Islamic knowledge needed for you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Prof. Fathi. Uh, I would like to uh, acknowledge the presence of uh, Prof. Osman Bakar. Uh, Prof. Osnani, Prof. Oslina, and Prof. Galia, and the rest of the scholars who are on the Zoom over there. I think Professor Osnan <laughs> would like to say a few words of wisdom. We, we, we go to Prof. Amin. Osman and then we come back to our offices in the room here. Amin. Go ahead, Prof. Amin. Yeah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, Professor Matis. Assalamualaikum, Professor Markawi. Nice to see you again. No, thank you very much for your uh, lecture because um, uh, you offer so many food for thought that I think will be very good um, for uh, the audience and, uh, of course, 
um, the larger public. Um, I think uh, if I just go to the questions you pose, just simply pose the question. There's already a lot of things uh, that need to be, you know, uh, to, to, to be done. But I just want to bring up this point. Uh, you, for example, you bring the example uh, of oil and professor is fine for the with regard to Islamization and integration. He was also my teacher at Temple, uh, I should have seen uh, for many, many years. Um, but when we talk about integration of knowledge, uh, we forgot one thing. We forgot one thing, and therefore we, we miss that point from Professor Ismail Faruqi. It's not just simply collecting data or what needs to be integrated, not needs to be Islamized. But what about the nature of the integrating behind that is going to do the integration work? And that's who we forget that. You mentioned the Palestinian, yeah, you, you mentioned professor, uh, as a philosopher. This is not given much attention. Professor Ismail Faruqi was a philosopher. His philosophical mind is important to do the work on integration of knowledge. I think this is where we need, we Muslims today, we have neglected, marginalized, Philosophy. No, I'm, I'm not equating philosophy with the philosophy of the peripatetic philosophers. No. I'm talking the more general idea of philosophy that it is a form of knowledge which is present in every discipline. Those who are doing education, there is what we call philosophy of education. There is sociology, this philosophy of society, anthropology. And so, if you don't imagine, you know, of the world uh, is doing the foundation, the metaphysics, cosmos, psychology. That's at the basis of uh, his political science, his uh, social sciences. Yeah, I just want to go back to that. In other words, um, because we have neglected what we call philosophy, especially as discussed, as expanded in Islamic and in the tradition of Islamic uh, tradition philosophy. Philosophy is found in also faith. Philosophy of law is to be found uh, in all the other disciplines as well. So I think um, that's what Professor Forbi had. So he was able to put to use his mind. Uh, this is what I'm to say. We tend to forget the person who is doing, the person supposed to do the integrating, the integration. What sort of mind he has? It uh, has philosophical knowledge. All the wisdom and stuff of philosophy with regard to knowledge, basically is epistemology. Yeah, uh, this is what I think I just want to, to appeal to Muslim educationists, uh, especially policy makers in universities. Uh, let us revise philosophy in the curriculum of university. And this is not simply having a department called Department of Philosophy. No, that's not, not, that, not what I'm saying. We started basically. Every discipline should be concerned with its own philosophical foundation. Thank you, Professor Markawi. It's your comment. Yeah, thank, you. thank you, Prof. I think uh, it's more like a comment, uh, yeah, yeah. stressing the importance of uh, philosophical thinking and mm -hmm. philosophy and moving from philosophical to policy making mm -hmm. and all this. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, reaffirming a few things, especially about the Faruqi. Faruqi himself is a great mm -hmm. uh, philosopher yeah. in that sense. That's why he is able mm -hmm. to think that way. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe we uh, come, we take one question. If you took yeah. one, uh, one uh, question from here, Prof. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Salam. Uh, I should not talk about Faruqi with your presence. They said you opened his mask. to make sure you know him. Faruqi here. Yeah. I'm a student of Faruqi. So my <laughs> question is this uh, Did the Islamization of Knowledge program, I think I'm in, in line with Usman Bakar, uh, because we studied together. Miss out on what you are talking about. Did they, did he and his Islamizers, or the founders of Islamization of knowledge, miss out on the on the ship or the train of integration of knowledge? This is my first question. Did they miss it out? 
Number two is that uh, in Islamization of knowledge, my, my, my issue is always the same. It's swimming my mind all the back. That the professors and the students are harping again and again on the Quran and Quran and Quran. I think as Muslims who are in, in the business of knowledge, the Quran is given. The Quranic worldview is given. We don't have to harp, harp on it again and again and again. And it's just repeating, repeating, repeating. So we end up with compartmentalization, as you said. If I want to uh, distribute inheritance, then I go to get okay? <clears throat> And this compartmentalization is there. So why? Because we don't take the Quranic worldview as a given worldview. So we are repeating again. It's become like ideological reputation. This is the second question. And the third part, my three years of meeting here mm -hmm. in IIUF, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I have recognized that we have a problem. And the problem is this, that our students uh, and the teachers also are trained, are, are already poorly trained in the Islamization of knowledge view, approach to knowledge, epistemology, ontology, as you all, all mentioned. So they don't want to revise. They don't want to change. They want to do the same thing again and again. I think Professor Tobi and I, we discuss this all, all the time, but we're just discussing. They don't want to change in spite of coming. With the word Islamic university uh, attracts all of these students here. But when they come here, as my experience is, they don't want to do critical thinking. And this is the problem. So I have this three comments. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. You see, we we live in a real world where uh, a few things have to be at least present in our hand, at least to make sure that others uh, will uh, uh, feel at ease with what we say. Uh, I don't want to go to the idea uh, the, of uh, the, the rational uh, way of, of uh, putting the Islamization and Islam, Islamic university, Islamic hospital, Islamic whatever. This is something uh, uh, has uh, been perhaps a necessity in the 70s and 80s. And it was okay at that time, the Sahwa Islami, Islamic awakening and so on and so forth. Later on, it becomes a burden to make uh, uh, these uh, titles of Islamic. And we realize that sometimes it, it became a, a burden on, on, on us, uh, but that's the reality that we have Islamic universities now. Islamic universities before 90s were uh, just kuliyat sharia, like Al-Azhar or uh, some other uh, places, Al-Zaytuna, Al-Qarawiyin, uh, teaching Islamic sharia, fiqh, hadith, Quran, and so on and so forth. But the idea of Islamic universities after 1977 was to establish a university with an Islamic methodology, Islamic thinking, Islamic worldview, where you teach sociology, psychology, medicine, engineering at the same university. So you have now Muslim scientists, Muslim uh, engineering, Muslim medical uh, professionals, etc. That was the idea: is to combine the Islamic identity, the Islamic uh, background with the uh, professional uh, uh, aspects of uh, contemporary knowledge. That was uh, yani, uh, 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 one of the necessities of the time that always some uh, uh, in, in a certain time, sometimes you have to, you feel under a pressure of using certain, uh, certain terminology. Later on, you realize that this terminology became a burden on you. That I think this what has happened in the so-called Islamic university and Islamization of knowledge and whatever uh, Islamic things. For example, we have in Jordan, you have also in Kuala Lumpur Islamic, uni Islamic hospital. It was built at, at the same uh, way uh, in Jordan. 
uh, okay, uh, uh, يعني, uh, a poor man would come to the hospital because it is Islamic university, Islamic hospital. So he feels that he is, he should be treated without paying because it is Islamic. Mm -hmm. So Islamic became something, uh, uh, what the charitable uh, things. So this kind of uh, link between uh, the realities of people, the way people think, and the, uh, so this is this is a problem uh, really about about that. That's why sometimes you need to say that I am not coming from uh, somewhere else. I'm coming from the Quran and Sunnah. Look at the Quran. There is something in the Quran in that. There is something in the Islamic heritage. Okay. Sometimes you need to do that in you in a practical uh, situation. I, I just one example. I'm sorry if I uh, uh, I was teaching. Uh, Chemistry. I'm trained as a chemist, teaching chemistry. So uh, when I teach, for example, uh, um, chemical bonds, uh, the bonds between uh, uh, atoms, okay, we have electrical uh, bond, we have uh, uh, hydrogen bond. The hydrogen bond is very important because it links uh, molecules of water. Uh, uh, water, H2O, like S2O, like uh, H2S, etc. It should be gas. Why it is water? Because there are there is a hydrogen uh, uh, bond which combined seven uh, molecules together and they became uh, uh, more uh, thakil, more uh, uh, heavy. So it's, it's uh, move on each other, not uh, apart from each other. So it is a liquid, it's not gas. Okay, why? Because of this. And because of this, uh, the density of, of the water would, uh, would uh, when, when it become cold, it more, uh, uh, no, it's, uh, it become more condensed. Okay, until it reach uh, four degrees, less than four degrees, uh, it's the change. It's something happened that instead of being heavy, it being uh, light. So uh, when it uh, freezes, it come out at the level. So for this, all life in seas still continue. And because of this, because of this uh, anomalies it, uh, happened in, in this, uh, uh, the idea is sometimes you say, oh, you remember now, where this ayah comes uh, in, you can understand it now. وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْءٍ It's something you need to do something like that in order to that the people will feel, feel easy about it, but not at the intellectual level. This is some uh, yeah, something of the personal uh, uh, aspect. Uh, that's, uh, but the need, the real need now is not to do that because it is part of your Islamic uh, personality, and you build it from uh, you were uh, to have this uh, back Islamic background, but in your intellectual aspects of life as uh, sociology, you have to be a critical, a critical mindedness. You you have to uh, be at the level of any scientist uh, in the world, and university should produce basically should produce you know the history of the university produce scientists. Right. Not teachers, produce scientists. Uh, now, there's a lot of change, of course, at the university because they produce uh, workers to do this uh, and that. And, but I feel that the idea of Islamization of knowledge is not something for the majority of people. It's for the selected, for Nukba, for, for the elite in order to have a leader leadership positions. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the main scientists of the world are very few. In all history, scientists who make or who made the real changes are very few. You can count them. So uh, I, I think the elite people in this business of Islamization knowledge should realize their um, uh, mission and vision in order to do uh, the, the the needed work. It's not the needed. Uh, it's not the work of everyone. 
not everyone can do can be critical mindedness not everyone can be uh, well qualified to do islamization of knowledge wallahu alam yeah thank you thank you thank you for, uh, for, for the comment i think we have a uh... One more question from the Zoom, and then we can take questions from our people here. Uh, Dr. Murad uh, Tahrawi, are you still uh, around with us? Prof. Murad, Dr. Murad? Assalamu alaikum. Go ahead, Dr. Murad. Go ahead, yeah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman of the, the lecture, and also to the uh, speaker, uh, Prof. Malkawi. I have a small question, and uh, it is probably going to help the audience to digest uh, better the, the concepts and the very uh, strong, in fact, uh, strong and uh, uh, powerful uh, meanings that you, you, you presented today. The assumption that the, pri the priority in this juncture is to execute the integration of knowledge and not to continue talking about it particularly in the research and publication at the higher education level. Uh, this assumption means that the stage of theorization and explanation of the theoretical concepts is successfully completed. This is what I understood from, from the uh, manual you mentioned. You said that we shouldn't continue talking about Islamization or uh, integration of knowledge, rather, it's time now to do it, do it in research, to do it in uh, uh, books and so on. Uh, is, the, is this exactly what, what you meant of Malkawi in, in your, uh, in the, by the end of your presentation? Thank you. The, the question also, I wrote it here. The assumption that priorities of the moment involve applying IOK, integration of knowledge, and not continuing the theoretical discourse about uh, 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 Islamization of knowledge, particularly in research at the higher education level. This assumption means that the stage of theorization and explanation of the theoretical concept has successfully been completed. Is that what you mean, dear Prof? I think this is what we were debating yesterday, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, uh, I think I mentioned also that we have to move ahead from talking about integration and Islamization to do it in uh, real uh, business of research and teaching. Uh, that's why we, uh, yeah, any, uh, uh, I, I made this uh, the title uh, of this uh, presentation, Overcoming the Obstacles, and the answer was to try to make a manual to help at least those who are doing uh, the work to help doing that. And uh, we have two obstacles to do that. In fact, one of them, who are doing it in order to understand what they are doing to identify those who are doing integration. Then those who are doing integration, are they aware of the process that, that they are doing? They can describe this for someone else. These are different things. You can, you, you may be doing integration, but tell me what to do it. It might be not easier for you even to explain for me what you are doing. So this is what we are trying to do, Brother uh, Tahrawi now, to have a manual where to identify people who are doing it and research which is well done for this purpose, analyze these examples and put them in, 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 in writing so that we have a manual. If we need to train people, we have something to use. Uh, not continue to talking about, we must do integration. We realize that we must do it, but we need to do it. Uh, thank you, Prof. Let's see if there is any uh, button. Go ahead, Dr. Wong. Can you, uh, can you thank you very much to your Dr. Wong is a medical doctor. He's a medical doctor. Yeah, we have all the time to go to and also, I was talking of the electric content on my opinion. But most important to me is actually the incision, which we have talked about really deep. Stop 
like you. Yeah. Because for the last 30 years or so, I mean, I would say history, you have to ask what has been achieved at the Ezekiel level. How do we measure the success of our case in our research? We talk very well and very attractive. We say a person can have two sentences, one in this, one in their own discipline. I'm, I've uh, talked to you on a medical graduate for quite a long time. Do you know how happy the semester is going to be? You have a non Muslim university, or in a country or region, which is non Muslim. The student needs to be compatible within their own land. Talking about UK medical school, the dropout rate we're talking about 50%. Not to mention, you need to consider IOA in their own mind. Now, undergraduate training is actually only a small part within the professional life of a teacher. Five years, six years. We are talking about a career of about 40 to 50 years. Undergraduate teaching, I'm not saying it's not important. For me, as a medical educator, graduate training, which is much more important. So what follows? Two questions. What do you put in the undergraduate curriculum not to increase their progress in the discipline, the medical discipline? Two, how to follow up their continuous training at IK integration, whatever you're going to do, to nurture them to become not only as a um, doctor, not an Islamic educator. But as a doctor to the patient, who could he or she have lied? Her treatment or is her own harm? You can be found. Mm -hmm. I took a couple of yes. people in Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur. How do they apply that with your students in their practice? My answer is I don't know. I'm talking about Islamic medical practitioners. Not only have they had to consider the law of land, which is Malaysia, then they have to be updated all the time with respect to deliberations and decisions on Islamic medical jurisprudence, which they have no access to. How will you address that? What yes. Do you see from what do you suffer? Yes, what doctor, you I think you have to have the decision in the teaching of the IMJ. Yes, 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 you have put it very. Uh, Clearly, uh, Prophet Lee, uh, our doctor Wong from Hong Kong, and he is he came all the way from Hong Kong to do his master's in Islamic thought and civilization, mm. and he's a medical doctor <laughs> that he has a mission in life. Mashallah, mashallah. So, uh, so he, <laughs> he, he, he was, uh, uh, in fact, asking about uh, two, I think, important things here uh, how to uh, train. Uh, the, the lecture here addressing maybe the instructor, the professors, the lectures, but what about the students, the people who are doing things down? How do we train them to be expert in this and how to follow up and make sure that that training gives gives actually fruits? Uh, that's a, and, they, and he relates to medical, how about ju medical jurisprudence, for example. How, how do we create those minds who are not only living in a Muslim context, mm. but wherever they go, medical, they can actually relay themselves in the world. Yeah. Of course, uh, training now in uh, business, uh, uh, it's, it's training is a business now. Uh, the uh, trainer, training of trainers, uh, trainer of trainer. Uh, so, um, uh, it's a real need to have will qualified individuals in every aspect who can master the uh, the mission that they are trying to give and achieve and they can those qualified can uh, train others training is always follow fellowship or follow follow up is part of training training is not just attend something and go away part, very important part of training is the follow-up of training in order to, to make sure that those 
trained individuals might be also trainer of others and uh, things could spread uh, yani. but they're always they have uh, gurus they have the uh, yani, big heads they have uh, the uh, uh, those uh, so-called intellectual scientists who can create the ideas and build on that ideas in a practical way to uh, um, uh, to spread uh, the, the the needed uh, things in, in in their society in order to upgrade and motivate uh, the society. So there will be always some pe some people who are well 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 qualified to do that, and that's our question: Who are they, and how we produce them, how we train them? and how we uh, help them uh, try to uh, spread uh, what is needed to be spread. Yeah, thank you, Doctor. I think we are crossing the, the time. Uh, you remember we have started late, uh, yeah. but Alhamdulillah, we are uh, almost five o'clock. Uh, we're supposed to uh, end by five o'clock, another two minutes maybe. I see uh, our sister Marriott, uh, you want to ask a question? Uh, our sister? Okay, let's see, uh, Sister Mary, uh, another hand there. In fact, they have many questions also in the Zoom here and YouTube. <laughs> but, uh, but because if you if you allow another one hour, I don't have a problem. Okay. So Sister Mary is all the way from Peru. Oh, mashallah. Uh, she's here and studying in our institute here. Thank you, Dr. What's the name? Uh, in the that in Islam we have uh, epistemology, epistemo uh, many schools of epistemology ranging from epistemology to mysticism. And these schools, each one of them, they have their own inputs, approaches, and so on and so forth. Uh, how are we to deal with our own uh, reality now uh, in the presence of all this type of things? So uh, how do we go for that integration where we have a model which guides us all towards uh, something. Mm -hmm. uh, part of the answer should be always to start from the state in which you are in. Uh, so there's an issue in a certain discipline. When we deal it, we deal with it as a certain issue in a certain discipline. So in order to deal with it, you have to have the available knowledge about it, right? That's natural. If you don't have the full uh, command of that uh, knowledge about it, it's not easy to solve the problem related to that issue. So uh, this is uh, this is the work of science, right? That we have a question to answer. We have a problem to solve. So what is the problem? The problem is something related to society. There is a problem with uh, the handicaps. There is a problem with the, uh, the blind people. There is a problem with the whatever. So what is the knowledge available at the uh, at, at your time, not in your country, but in all the world? I mean, you, uh, it's easy now uh, for everyone to uh, uh, have the knowledge available in, even in various languages. It's easy to translate, easy to uh, uh, commission translator. It's easy to bring together what is available of that and see the experiences related it in various places and build on your thinking about how to do the, uh, to answer the question. So you have to start not from uh, a text, 
which is written whether Quran or Sunnah. You have to start with the issue at hand, okay? And uh, 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 make uh, sure that you have uh, uh, available or uh, knowledge which is known about that issue. So then, of course, uh, use the scientific method. You uh, state the uh, answers, general answers, specific answers. Perhaps you make faradiyat, uh, 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 hypothesis. Then you plan to uh, uh, test these hypotheses. Then, uh, uh, but you have your Islamic background. Islamic background is something related to two things. First, you put all this knowledge within your perspective, and you have values. And the values here is not something Islamic uh, specific because values are a human. In, uh, at the end, and uh, whatever human uh, values are Islamic values, as Al Maududi has mentioned in the fifties uh, in in one of his uh, books. So the part of the value, for example, in the medical, uh, there are, uh, yani ethics, certain ethics in medicine, and it's it's a human uh, experience. So it's not something that because you are Islamic, you are different from other people. Other people deal with things as they are, and you do do it the same way. But you have your own personality. You have something to put to add to that, and make sure that it is uh, it, uh, it 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 fulfill uh, the purposes. Alhamdulillah, I think uh, uh, we have come to uh, the end of our uh, Stack World Professorial Lecture Number Eighteen. I have several questions in the Zoom here, and some other brothers who wanted to ask questions, please send them to me, and we will forward them to Prof. Uh, Fathi, and I think, uh, I'm sure he will address them uh, in his writings. What we are going to do in the next three, four minutes, I'm going to wrap up in two minutes, and then we will be giving the certificate of the professorial world lecture to Prof, and then Dr. Nick will uh, read for us the dua to gain barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a tradition of our stack or professorial lecture. Brothers and sisters and uh, Prophet, hey, thank you very much for uh, this very important lecture. I think we need to take it and listen to it again and again and digest. And I hope uh, Professor Fethi will provide us with the PowerPoint presentation because it contains many other important details. What you take away from the epistemological integration uh, as presented by uh, Prof. Fethi uh, today, it's important that each and every one of us in any discipline that we have that needed and necessary knowledge of Islam, of Islamic worldview, of Islamic maqasid, but not as specialists of aqidah, of fiqh, of usul, of it. We take the necessary knowledge that makes us think from an Islamic perspective and go to our disciplines. And in our disciplines, we will find models, we will find theories, we will find values. And he said that those values not necessarily to be Islamic or we don't follow, but need to be human and civilizational. And that what makes us engage with the world and with other models of knowledge with other epistemologies. And that's what makes us go more practical from the theories and models to the real life. The second thing that we uh, summarize from what Prof. Fathi mentioned is that uh, this business of integration of knowledge and Islamization of knowledge, not to be the business of every and each Muslim in this world. But it's the business of the scholars, the elite, the educationalists, those people who will translate this into the real world, into the public, into the problem solving in life. So brothers and sisters, with this, I thank you all for coming and participating in this. Our people in Zoom, great scholars, great participants in the YouTube also, they are there since we started and you here 
in this Ibn Khaldun room. May God bless you all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alaykum. 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 Alayk